Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus camera. We're going to be going through everything, all the features and the settings. As always, there's a link in the description if you want to check out more videos on the iPhone 8. The full playlist to show you how to use the iPhone like a pro is right there. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so what we're working with here is the iPhone 8, and we're just gonna start off by launching the camera application. There's a few ways you can do this. We'll just use the standard camera app, so we'll tap on that at the top. I'll be going over the other ways you can later on in the video. And what you're seeing in the background is actually a drone. If you're interested in drones and wanna check it out, there's a link in the description. Now, when you first launch the camera application, it will default you to the photo section. Now this is probably gonna be the most used other than the video section when it comes to just point and shoot photos. And it works very simple. All you need to do is focus the camera on what you're trying to take a picture of and then tap on this shutter button down here. As soon as you do that, it'll take the photo. You'll see a preview in the bottom left and you can tap on that where you can edit, trash the photo, take a look at all your photos. It kind of just transfers you over to the photos application. Most people pick up the camera and hold it like this. This is considered to be portrait mode. However, when you take pictures like this, they're long and they can end up with those black bars on the left and right if you're viewing it on a computer. To avoid this, I recommend taking photos anytime possible in this landscape mode. Now when you do this, you get a wide angled photo and you wanna make sure that the volume rockers are at the top. This may seem a little bit odd considering the camera ends up being at the bottom of the phone, but this is the correct way to hold the camera if you're going to take photos like this. If you take the photo with the volume rockers on the bottom, they may end up upside down if you try to view it on a computer. So the way it works like this, again, you can just tap on the shutter button, it'll take the picture, or you can use the volume rockers at the top, point and shoot, and it'll take the picture. Now there are some options that you can use while you're taking the photo. For example, if you wanna brighten the photo, darken the photo, if you wanna focus on certain subjects in the photo, you can do that. Simply put, when you have the photo by default, as you move around, you'll see that square appear. It's gonna focus on what it thinks is the main subject in the photo. However, let's say you wanted to focus on a certain area, all you would have to do is use the tap to focus. So I'll tap on the top right, you'll see the yellow square, it'll now focus on that area. Bottom, same thing, you'll see it's focusing, or in the middle, it'll tap to focus. Additionally, you can lock the focus. So for example, if I have this in the photo, and I'm moving around, you'll see it's going to pick up whatever it wants to focus in on. But let's say I want that to focus and I don't want it to move. So I want to tap and hold on the subject. You'll see AEAF lock at the top. Now when I move around, it's not going to move that focus. It's going to stay in that position where you left it on your camera. If you want to go back to autofocus, just tap somewhere else, it'll return. You can also adjust the saturation, which is the darkness or brightness of the photo. The way you do this, just tap to focus once again, and then just swipe downwards. You can see that it'll, it'll darken the screen, swipe upwards, and you can see that it'll make the screen very bright. Kind of looks messed up, so to return back to the default, just tap, and it'll focus in once again. Now while you're in the photo option of the camera app, you do have some other features that you can work with. We'll start up top. First right here we have filters and these are live filters. So if we tap on that, you'll see we have some options that we can choose from at the bottom. As we tap or swipe across, you'll see that it changes the filter of the photo. And there's many to choose from. And when you do choose, you can take the photo just like I showed you earlier. Just tap on the shutter, tap the preview, to see the photo. To move back to the original, just swipe all the way to the left. You'll see it says original, and then just tap the filter option to return back to default. To the left, we have a timer. Now this is great, especially if you're taking photos in groups, you want everybody in the shot. Tap on the timer. You'll see that you can choose to either have a three second timer or a 10 second timer. For this example, let's say we want a three second timer. We'll tap on three seconds. As soon as we tap on the shutter, we have three seconds before it'll take the photo. So we tap. And there it's taken our photo. So that's the timer. Again, you can choose between off three seconds or 10 seconds. 
Now the option to the left of the timer, it's called live photos. And anytime it's on, what it's going to do is capture about a second before and after you take the photo. So for example, if I take this photo of myself moving, I'll come in and out of the photo like this, and then I tap the shutter. Now, if we preview the photo, you'll see that it says live at the top. Now the way you activate this is you simply press on the screen while you're previewing the photo. So watch, I'll press. And then I tap the shutter. And you get about a second before and a second after with audio. Now if you don't want this feature on, we'll move back to the camera app, you wanna make sure that this option at the top is not yellow and in fact it's white with a slash across. Now with iOS 11, when you do tap to preview it, you can actually modify this. If you tap edit here, you can actually modify the movements and kind of create something that you would like specific so that it'll move only in the sections that you want. Again, I'll go through this in another video when we go through the photos application, but it is there if you wanna play around with it. The last option at the top, it's pretty important, especially for low light. Some of the best pictures you can take would be with natural light. However, it's not always the case. So if we tap on that, it's going to allow us to turn on a flash. So by default, it's set to auto, which it does a pretty good job with. So you can manually turn it on by tapping on. And then when you take the photo, you'll see a flash. Again, to turn it off, tap turn off and that way it won't be on. I like to keep mine on auto and if it doesn't do a good job, I'll just quickly manually change it. Now, if we take a look at the bottom section, we already went through the preview and the shutter button. There is another option right here. Now, if we tap on that, you'll see that it flips the camera around. You guys can see me now on the camera. I still have many of the options available to this. This is going to use the front facing camera. It's pretty good on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but it's still not as good as the rear facing camera. So other than selfies, I don't see a purpose for using this camera. But again, you can use the same options like filters at the top change things up, you can take your photo like so. You'll see that there was a white light. That came out with iOS 10, which allows you to have somewhat of a front facing camera flash. It does a pretty good job, but if you don't like that, you can turn it off. And when you take the photo, it'll just be a standard selfie. Now, when you take selfies, I'm pointing to the right, I see myself in the right, but when I preview the photo, I'm looking left, right? My head's here when it was here before. If you don't like this mirrored effect, I have a video that'll show you how you can modify this so that you can flip the other way. So the pictures you take will actually look like this. Your head will be in the spot that you've looked at it so that you're not flipping. The reason for this though, however, is that if they took the picture this way, you can see that my camera says Canon, it's upside down and backwards. So by flipping it, when you see it, now you can read the writing. So it's things like that. If you don't like that though, and you want it to look exactly as you're seeing it, check out the link in the description, it'll show you how. Now to switch between options, all you have to do is swipe right and swipe left. And you can see that it'll take us to square photos, pano, all kinds of different photo options here. So we'll swipe left and we can take a look at the square photo. Now this option works just like the photos option. The only difference is that you're now taking a square photo rather than a rectangular photo and you don't have the live photos option. Moving on to the left side here, we have panel. Now this option is really cool, especially if you can use it correctly. So what you wanna do basically is you want to take the camera and it's going to glide across this line. And what it's gonna allow you to do is get a lot of real estate in the photo without actually just holding it. So you can grab everything that you swipe across in that photo. So I'm gonna grab the PlayStation over there. I'm gonna grab the drone. I'm even gonna grab all the way on the left there, that. And it's all going to be applied into one. So we'll start from this angle. We're gonna tap the shutter to start and then we wanna keep our hand as steady as possible as we go across. So let's start. We'll tap stop and our panoramic photo has been taken. Now we'll just take a quick look at the preview here. 
you can see that it grabbed the background there, it grabbed the drone, it grabbed the PlayStation, even my coffee cup. You can see it grabs everything in the photo and it almost looks like the photo was taken and it fit everything into one screen. However, you will notice weird little changes in the background. You can see that the line of the wall is kind of angled and depending on how steady you are, you can make this look really cool. Now we'll swipe right and we'll go to the video section. Now video is very popular with the iPhone and for starters, the main difference is when you're on video, the shutter is a red record button. You have options like the ability to flip to the front facing camera where you can do pretty much everything you could do with the video on the other side, tap, to start the video, we'll just flip back. You have your preview on the bottom left, and then you have an option up top, which will allow you to turn on the light or set it to auto or off. I traditionally leave it off. I try to get the light from natural sources unless I really need it. Now to take the video, it's simple. We'll just tap and it'll begin recording everything that you record on screen anything you wanna do, pretty standard. And while you're in the video mode, you can see the timer up top and you can also take a photo. So let's say I wanted to grab a photo, we can tap on the white shutter at the bottom left and it'll take the photo for us. When we're ready to stop recording, we tap stop. There's the video. And it'll begin recording everything that you record on the screen. And if we tap back in there and I swipe left, there's the photo I took within the video as well. Now, while taking video, you can actually record in many different settings. We'll be going over those settings at the end here. So if you do wanna record, let's say in 4K or in a certain frame rate, you'll be able to set that up as well. Now, I've just added a subject to the screen here, the iPhone 8 box. What we're gonna do is swipe right and activate the slow motion option here. Now, I'm not sure what's going on. The iPhone may have a glitch. It could be iOS 11. However, the slow motion option works the same. Let me know in the comments if your slow-mo kind of does this. You can see it's darkening, lightening, darkening. Something seems wrong. However, we'll test it out here. We'll tap on the shutter button and what it's going to do is the movements in your video are gonna get this cool slow-mo effect. Now there's some options that we can play with later on. I'll show you in the settings as well, but take a look at this. So we'll tap to start as the movement happens. We'll stop it. Now we'll go to our preview and we'll click play. And you'll see it's slowing down the video. You'll even get that cool slow-mo sound effect that goes with it. Now it's really flashing. So there may be an issue, not sure if it's iOS or if it's my phone in general, but that's how the slow-mo option works. Moving to the right, once again, we'll swipe right. This is the time-lapse option. And the way this works, it's very cool. I'll show you on screen as I talk. You just tap and it'll begin taking the video. You wanna take video for long periods of time. Let's say you take half an hour video of the sky. So this looks really cool if you've ever watched the Hangover movie when the night turns into day in like 30 seconds, that's time-lapse. So you can actually just leave your camera running, let's say cars driving by or the sky, and it's going to give you that really cool time-lapse effect. All right, now let's take a look at the settings so that you can customize the camera app the way you'd like it. So we'll tap on the settings application. We will scroll down to where it says camera, and we'll see that the first setting here allows you to preserve settings. So we'll tap on that. And these settings here will allow you to, first off, preserve the last mode, such as video square, rather than automatically resetting to photo. So the default is always photo. However, if you have this on, it'll default to what you had on last. The filter option pretty much does the same thing. When it's on, it'll default to the last option you were using. And then the live photo, you can preserve the live photo setting. Rather than automatically resetting to live photos turned on, It'll be the way that you left it. So turning these three on will allow you to preserve settings. The next option is grid. When you turn it on, we'll open the camera app. You can see that it adds grids. I'll just darken this so that you can see the grids. There it is. I personally just use it to help me center certain objects in the screen. It works really well for me that way. 
Moving down, we have scan QR codes. This is actually really good. So if you want to scan a QR code and be taken to the website or to be taken to the page that it's on, you can just now open up the camera app and it'll automatically scan that QR code and take you to that page. Now the record options, we have record video. If we tap on it, it's set by default to 1080p HD at 30 frames per second. Now you can change this. You can see all the options. Obviously the biggest, most memory filled option would be the 4K at 60 frames per second. You can see right here at the bottom how much space it's going to take up on your device. Now, thankfully the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, it comes standard with 64 gigabytes. So you can actually take some 4K at 60 frames per second and not burn through all of your memory. For example, if I go 4K at 60 frames per second, we'll open up the camera app here. And if I go to the video, you can see here, it's now telling me at the top that I'm filming in 4K at 60 frames. Moving back, we'll take a look at the record options in slow-mo. So same deal here, you can record at 1080p and 240 frames per second or 1080p at 120 frames per second. If we do that, the standard is 240 right now. We open that up. If we go to the slow-mo here, you'll see it'll tell you you're recording in HD 120. Next, we have formats. If we tap on that, we have high efficiency and most compatible. Now, high efficiency, when you have it on, it's going to try to reduce the file size as much as it can. You can read the little description right here exactly what it's going to do. There are some formats and options that you might want to take a look at. Otherwise, you can go to most compatible and that'll just put together the most compatible options that it can use rather than trying to find the most efficient options with compatibility. Moving down, we have HDR. I usually just leave this on. I really like the way the photos come out. It's high dynamic range. It's supposed to blend the best parts of three photos or three exposures and bring them together. If you don't like this, you can turn it off. And if you turn the keep normal photo, you'll have the high dynamic range photo as well as a standard photo. Now you also have some options when it comes to launching the camera app. So from the lock screen here, if you swipe to the left, it'll launch the camera app. You can also take photos while in the camera app if you have your ear pods connected. You could just press on the middle of the two volume rockers here and it'll take photos. This should work with the AirPods, however, I haven't tested it out. So that's how you use the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus camera. A lot of this can be used with other iOS devices as well. And if I could give you guys one tip to take the best photos you can, and that would be lighting. The reason why you're probably getting some rough pictures on your phone may be due to poor lighting. In dark scenarios, no camera can really do that great of a job. So the better the lighting, the better the photo you're gonna get. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, the link is in the description if you wanna check out more videos on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, as well as the iPhone 10, you can take a look at the full playlist. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next one.